Hey everyone and welcome back to our channel. So guys, in today's video, we are going to discuss about stress strain curve. So let's begin. In this module, we will learn how strain changes with changing stress for different types of material. Before further proceed, let us take a look on stress and strain. When a body is subjected to a deforming force, a restoring force is developed in the body which is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the applied force. This restoring force per unit area is known as stress and the deformation caused is known as strain. The relation between the stress and the strain for a given material can be found experimentally. In a standard test of tensile property, a spring is stressed by an applied force. The frictional change in length and the applied force needed to cause the strain are recorded. The applied force is gradually increased in step and the change in length is noted. A graph is plotted between the stress and the strain produced. The stress strain curve varies from material to material. These curves help us to understand how a given material deforms with increasing loads. From the graph, we can see that in the region between O to A, the curve is linear. In this region, Hooke's law is obeyed. The body remain its original dimension when the applied force is removed. In this region, the solid behaves as an elastic body. In the region from A to B, stress and strain are not proportional. The body still returns to its original dimension when the load is removed. The point B in the curve is known as yield point, also known as elastic limit and the corresponding stress is known as yield strength of the material. The region O, A, B represents the elastic behavior of the material of the spring. If the load is increased further, the stress developed exceeds the yield strength and strain increase rapidly even for a small change in the stress. The portion of the curve between B and D shows this. When the load is removed, say at some point C, between B and D, the body does not regain its original dimension. In this case, even when the stress is zero, the strain is not zero. The material is said to be permanent set. The deformation is said to be plastic deformation. The point D on the graph is the ultimate tensile strength of the material. Beyond this point, additional strain is produced even by a reduced applied force and fracture occurs at E. If the ultimate strength and fracture points D and E are close, the material is said to be brittle. If they are far apart, the material is said to be ductile. The region B, C, D, E represents the plastic behavior of the material of spring. Let's recap. The stress strain curve varies from material to material. The stress strain curve of a material has the following regions. Elastic region where the body regain its original dimensions when the applied force is removed. Plastic region where on applying a force, the bodies undergo a permanent deformation. Fracture region, where additional strain is produced even by a reducing applied force and fracture occurs. In the stress strain curve, for a brittle substance, the ultimate strength and fracture points lie close to each other. If the ultimate strength and fracture points are far apart, in the stress strain curve, of a material, the material is said to be ductile. Substances which can be stretched to cause large 